Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in today's video I'll be saving you loads of time by showing you how to save a startup file and I'll be giving you some suggestions for what to put in your startup files. So here's the basic scene in Blender but many of you including myself for most of your projects will be doing the same things over and over again. For example let's go to the render settings and let's say we're happy to render in Eevee. I find myself going through ticking the ambient occlusion, the screen space reflections and scroll down to the film and I always set this to transparent so that when I render I have a transparent background. So some simple things there that most people do. Well what we can now do is go across to file down to defaults and save startup file. Click on that and click on save startup file to make sure that you're happy with that. Now when I close down Blender I don't need to save this because it's my new startup file so don't save and then I can open up Blender again click away from the splash screen and notice my render settings are still there. So we can save ourselves absolutely masses of time by not repeating these steps and having them in our natural startup file. So now I'm going to share with you some aspects from my ideal startup file. I rarely use the timeline but it is handy to have it there so instead of changing the layout workspace I'm going to right click and duplicate it and I call this layout full and get rid of the timeline. So right click in between join areas and join those two together. So now I can have the timeline or a full screen. I don't do scripting so I can get rid of that. So you can set up the workspaces along here to suit you. And at any time you can go file, defaults, save startup file, save startup file. One other thing that I think is really useful in the shading tab, if we go to the world space we can put in an HDRI. I press the home button to find my nodes there. Shift A to add texture and an environment texture. Bring that in at the front and open up an HDRI. Hook that up. So whenever I load, I've already got an HDRI in my scene. I'll go back to layout full again. And although many will be upset, you can delete the default cube and have something more useful there instead, if that's possible. What I would find more useful is to have a base mesh there of a person. That way, when we build things like buildings, roads, landscapes, or whatever it might be, we've got a reference for size. Here's a great female base mesh from Eliba. And this is available on BlendSwap for free. I'll put a link to this in the description. But you can download this and we can place it into our Blender startup file. So back to Blender. Once you've downloaded it, file, append, find your female base mesh file, open it up, go to the objects, and there's one in an A pose, which I think will be best. Append that in, and there we have our female. If I select the model and press N on my keyboard, you can see the size of the model is actually 19 meters tall. So we want to make that something more sensible, so scale it down to something like 1.65 probably is about average, I think, for a female. And I can zoom in on that with full stop or period key on my keyboard. And once again, file, save startup file. You can also bring in brushes, such as sculpting brushes or texture brushes, all materials, but you have to give them a fake user. I'll talk about that in the next video, but hopefully this has given you enough to play with and will save you loads of time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.